finally, I want to show you a variant of this Lucid D app. It's in folder Lucid Ref Script. So again, you can build it with npm install and run it with npm start. And the code is in source.index.js. And in this variant, I want to demonstrate the use of reference scripts. So I've explained that several times before. Traditionally, if a transaction wants to spend a script UTXO, it has to include the script. And that has the effect that if a script is popular and is consumed hundreds or thousands of times, then hundreds or thousands of transactions have to include the same script over and over again, which, for example, makes the blockchain bigger and means that more hard drive space is needed to store the blockchain history. So since the Vasil hard fork, there is an alternative where so-called reference scripts can be used. Before Vasil, an output consisted of an address, a value, and an optional datum. And Vasil changed that and made it possible to also optionally include a script in an output. So that's one part of the story. In order to use reference scripts, first, somebody must create an output somewhere on the blockchain that makes use of this new option and includes the script that you later want to reference in that output. And then, once it's there in a UTXO, when a transaction wants to spend a UTXO sitting at the address given by this script, it doesn't have to include the script, but instead it can point to the UTXO that has the script attached. So it's a trade-off of costs. It's relatively costly to create these reference script outputs, but once they are created, to use them is cheaper than including the transaction, because a pointer is in general much smaller than an actual script. The first question that arises is, where do you send such a reference script? It can be an arbitrary UTXO, but um, what address should you choose? And there are certainly several options. So for example, if you just want to try it out, maybe you can just send it to your own wallet and then you can later spend it again. And then also collect that money, this deposit that you needed to pay in order to put the reference script on the blockchain. However, I think for serious applications, in particular, if you want to use it in production, one should probably put it somewhere where it can't be retrieved anymore. For example, something like the burn script we talked about in the last lecture. So the burn script was basically the second most simple script you can possibly write in Plutus that just completely ignores its three arguments, datum, redeemer, and script context, and always produces an error. So it's impossible to spend any UTXO located at the address of the burn script. So I think that's a very good candidate to place reference input scripts at, because then it's guaranteed that they will be there forever. So you can rely on the fact that that pointer will always point to a UTXO that's still there. So you can even hard code the TX outref pointing to this script in your code, because it's guaranteed that it will never change. I mean, blockchain is immutable. That's basically the most important point. So once it's there and it can't be spent anymore, you are guaranteed that it will forever be there at the same TX outref. And that makes things easier. So that's the path I chose for this example. So let's look at the code changes. First of all, I have the burn script here. Again, I just took the asset we created last week and copy pasted the CBOR here. So that's the burn script. Now the resting script, once I have it on the blockchain deployed as a reference script, I wouldn't actually need it any longer here. But I wanted to make it possible in this dApp version to also deploy the script in the first place. So I left that in there. Everything is basically the same. Now this is new, and this is getting the reference UTXO. 
so the UTXO where I have deployed the reference script, the vesting script. Earlier we saw a function that allows us to look up the UTXOs sitting at a given address. We use that to find all the vesting UTXOs. There's a variation on that where you can find all the UTXOs at a given outref. And this one is hard coded here. So I earlier when I prepared the lecture and when I wrote this D app, I tried out the deployment and I ended up deploying the vesting script to this specific TX outref. And as I explained before, because it's at the burn address, it's guaranteed that it will always be there. So I just hard coded that into my code. So I just look up the UTXO sitting there. And this returns an array, but of course, at a given TX outref, there can be either zero or one UTXO. There can never be two. The TX outref uniquely identifies a UTXO. So I expect to find exactly one there, and I return this. So the vesting part is the same because there I'm sending to a script address, not spending. The interesting part is where I claim. Because earlier, remember here, I had to include the vesting script for it to work. Now instead, for simplicity to keep it simple, I have this globally here. I use the function I just showed you, get reference UTXO, and I just save the resulting reference UTXO here in a global variable. And now when I construct the claim transaction, I no longer have to include the script, but instead I can use this read from, and there I can give a list of UTXOs. And in the beginning of the lecture, when we talked about the script context and TX info, I explained about reference inputs. So the data type, the Haskell data type, was the same as for regular inputs, but the important difference is that the transaction consumes regular inputs, in a particular runs their validator scripts if they are script inputs, but it does only look at reference inputs. And reference scripts are a special case. So reference scripts are implemented using reference inputs. And this here tells Lucid that I want to use these UTXOs as reference inputs. So in this case, I use the UTXO where my vesting script is located. And doing that, I now no longer need to include the actual script in the transaction. The rest is completely the same. Now there's one new thing. I, in the D app, have a new button for deploy, which allows me to deploy the vesting script to the burn address as a script output. And this is also very simple. So I create a new transaction, use the pay to contract that we have already seen. Now to the burn address, I don't send any money there. Of course, balancing will have the effect that some many will end up there because Cardano has this concept of min deposits. So any UTXO must contain a minimum amount of ADA. And that depends on the size of the output. So the bigger the size, for example, if the datum contains a lot of data, then this minimum deposit also becomes larger. But I don't have to put anything there. Lucid will take care of that automatically. I don't need any data. So this is another way to write this unit datum. So I could have used that earlier as well. Again, using inline datum, but it doesn't matter. It can't be spent anyway. And this is now optional where I say I want to include a script in this output. In this case, the vesting script. And that's all. So once I do this, I will end up with the UTXO that contains this vesting script, and then later I can reference it. When I start this D app, it looks almost exactly the same, except there's now this deploy button. And actually that's silly to put it in the D app because you only ever have to push that once. And I already pushed it, so none of you would ever need to push it again because now the Testing script is on the blockchain and can be referenced from there. And there's no need to ever deploy it again. Nevertheless, I just want to demonstrate how I did that. So if you push the deploy button, 
then you have to sign the transaction that will put the script at the burn address. And I mentioned before, it's relatively costly. So this is almost 14 ADA, which of course is not the world, but normal transactions I mean, start at something like 0.16 ADA, I think. And then depending on how big and complex they are, then can of course be more expensive. But this is really expensive for a Cardano transaction. But as you see, only 0.3 ADA are fee. So the rest, more than 10 ADA, is actually deposit because the vesting script is so big and you have to pay, as I said before, deposit for each UTXO and that deposit depends on the size of the data you put there. So in this case, it's quite a lot. But if it wasn't the burn address, if it was somewhere else, then I would also get it back when I spent that UTXO again. In this case, now that will be lost forever because nothing can ever be retrieved from the burn address. So if I sign that, I get a transaction hash. And this is actually how I found the value to hard code into my code to find the location of the reference script. Because now I already have half of the TFO trap I need, the transaction hash. Now all that's missing is the output index. And I can find out the output index, for example, in the Explorer. So if I wait a bit until it's on the blockchain and in the Explorer, I can follow this link. And there it is. And I can check the UTXOs. And this is the output I'm interested in. So I see there's this relatively large deposit. I see it's a smart contract address. That's the burn address. And I see there is a datum, which is not important, but in particular there's a script attached. So this is my vesting script attached to this UTXO. So now I know the TX outref. It's this transaction hash. And then because it's the first output, output index zero. Of course, if I check this address, then I see that there are several transactions because I tried that out before. So now this vesting script attached to several outputs sitting at the burn address, which is not necessary. As soon as it's there, it's there and it can be referenced.